But when Rasputin dies, there's open rebellion. We have a situation where the Tsar really doesn't have a whole lot of options. He's going to go back to the Tsarina so that he can get him out. The Tsar is going to advocate his throne. He is going to leave because the revolution has come to the palace doors. He needs to get out, and he needs to get out fast. He's even going to write a letter to his cousin, King George V of England, and say, basically, I need you to take us in. We need to flee Russia, and I need you to be our safe haven. But King George V has an empire that's wobbling as well. They can't hang on much longer. And if he brings the Tsar of Russia into uh, Great Britain, what King George V thinks, probably correctly, is I can't guarantee that I'll keep my own crown if I save the Tsar. He writes back to his cousin and tells him basically word for word, I hope you get out. Good luck. He turns his back on his cousin. He turns his back on one of his biggest allies as Russia's falling apart. With the Tsar and the Tsarina and their family gone, there's going to be a power vacuum. Now remember what happened eventually to the Tsar and the Tsarina and their family? They're assassinated. It paves the way for Vladimir Lenin and his Bolsheviks to fill the power vacuum. The communists have come to Russia and they take over. Now remember from yesterday, you guys were reading one of the first things that Lenin and the communists promise is we're going to get Russia out of the war. We are going to end Russian involvement. By March of 1917, Russia signs their own peace deal with Germany. They drop out of the war. Now I should probably ask this. With Russia dropping out, is that good news for Germany and the other central powers? Oh yeah, why is that? They're not surrounded anymore. The one thing that Germany wanted to avoid at the beginning of the war has finally come to fruition. They've knocked out one of the biggest powers of Europe. They're done. So what happens to all these German troops that have been stationed in the east? Where are they going now? <laughs> oh, they're not home yet. Mm -hmm. Not done. Where? They're going to the west. They're going to have 700,000 German troops infused into the trenches in the West. Is this bad news for the remaining Western allies? This is a disaster. This is a worst case scenario. Yes, Michelle. Uh, the Serbs are going to fight as hard as they can. The Serbs are tough, but they're going to be overrun in 1914. They don't last very long. We have a situation now where, yeah, the Russians have wobbled and fallen over. We need some way to replace them. Now, like I say, the timing works out almost perfectly. As the Russians drop out in March of 1917, they have just enough time to pass the torch to the Americans before they fall. In April 1917, the Americans declare war. We're in. But remember, as we talked about before, it's going to take a while for us to actually mobilize, for us to get these troops trained, to get across the Atlantic into Europe. We're not going to have American troops in Europe until June of 1917. We have a situation where France and Great Britain have about three months where they have to stand on their own. They've got to hold strong until the Americans arrive. Now what the French are going to say is they probably had about two weeks left. They could hold out for two more weeks before the Americans got there, and we get there just in time. We are going to send 
the AEF, the American Expeditionary Force. Now, this is the name for the military as for the first time we go overseas to be involved in a European conflict. But when we get to Europe, the Europeans are really shocked as to what they see. 